Hi, this is Anne with segment three of the My Data Set. Uh, what I have here is the code as we left it at the end of the last segment, where I have two parallel arrays, which um, contain attributes, uh, different attributes for the same six items, in this case, the lives of Henry VIII. Now, um, as I was saying, in, in old bad days before objects, this was one of the basic ways in which you kept track of things, is you had to have these lists, um, either in files or databases or wherever, of individual items, and then you had parallel arrays, um, and you needed to make sure that they were always the same size, that everything lined up. Once you have objects, however, um, although the notation looks a little complicated when you first get to know it, what happens is you can have the different attributes for a particular item travel together as a unit. And remember this time, at this point, we're only dealing with, we're dealing with data only objects, and which are the simplest ones to understand. So let me go over um, object notation, and then what I'm gonna do is convert this to array um, set of code that lists out all the items with their attributes and lists out a selection based on one of those attributes. I'm going to convert it over to object code from to array code. Um, so this time I'm going to come over here, remember to hit my duplicate button, end up with a dot three, um, and actually open the dot three. Again, it's easy to think that I've made a copy of it and that's what's open. But in fact, the only thing that's open right now is my data dot two. So I'm going to I'm going to open my data.3. Um, I'm going to close these versions and work right in here. And um, I'm going to take this business with the object notation, try to take it fairly slowly. Um, you, sh you should have seen this in your book. Um, when you're defining an object, um, and this is before I set it to a variable or put it in an array, uh, we have curly brackets. We, we like our curly brackets, right? They, they, they hold stuff together, whether it's a block of code inside an if or a loop, or in this case, they hold together the individual attributes of one of these women. So um, I have two attributes, which when they're inside an object are called properties. Um, and those attributes are name, and fate. And it can be a little confusing. The property name, just like a variable name, is not enclosed in quotes. The value of the, ver of the property, just like the value of a um, variable, is enclosed in quotes if the, if the value is a string. So for example, if I'm trying to create an object for this woman, her name is Catherine of Aragon, her fate was to be divorced, and that is an object for Catherine of Aragon. I have a red X over here because um, I could have um, defined, an object variable, set it equal to that, put a semicolon over here, and I have a single variable object which contains the attributes for Catherine of Aragon. Um, but that's not what we want to do here. What we really want to do is we want to create a my object uh, list. What did I call it over here? Hang on a sec, let me check something. Let's call it my object list, okay? And, um, and this object list isn't quite a list yet. Um, in order to make it uh, an array, remember I have to put it inside the square brackets that indicate that there are gonna be potentially multiple entries. So the first thing I wanna do is just call attention to the fact that when I have an array of string values, I open and close it with square brackets, and then each entry in that array is listed with a comma after it. Um, and the last one doesn't have a comma. So at the moment, Catherine's the last one in this, in this list, so she doesn't have a comma after her. But if I want to um, 
have more entries in this array then and I'm, again I'm not going to make you watch me fat finger all this in um, I've got that sitting over here in another file okay I now have an object list that just like these two items up these two lists up here has six items in it each of the items has an identical set of properties name and fate and the um, and then each of those properties has a different value in the case of the names and a, and a selected set of values in the case of the fates. Okay, so we have two divorced, two beheaded. Okay. So now down here, if I want to change this into object array output, I have to figure out a notation for how I get at the um, values, the properties of, of each of these objects. And um, we do that with what's called dot notation, and um, that's pretty conventional. So here, I'm gonna be iterating through the object list. It's a list, so I can use its length. And for right now, I'm just gonna comment out this code so we only have to change one thing at a time before we see it run. Because you really only wanna change, change a few things at a time before you see your code work, or not work, as the case often is. So here, um, this first line of output doesn't need to change at all because the index is still just the I value. And here, I could do um, a list notation, but I think what I'm gonna do is um, out here, declare an object called wife. And in here, I'm gonna do what's called dereferencing um, the item on the list. So each time we go through the loop, we're gonna set wife equal to the current entry in the array, which in this case is my object list sub i. Okay, so now each time through here, we've taken this rather complicated notation and we've said take that thing and assign it to the variable whose name is wife. And that makes this notation a little bit easier because down here, Wife has two properties, and, and how you get at them is with dot notation. So if I do not dot, um, name is suggested for me. And if down here I do wife, um, fate is suggested. So again, this is, we've dereferenced an item out of the array and stored it in the variable wife. Once we do that, we can access the, value, the values of the wife properties um, very easily with this dot notation. And if I run that, um, I have every reason to think it'll probably work. So I'm gonna pull that back up here to the top, split my screen again. And um, once more, I have what looks like exactly the same code running. So again, I keep refactoring this code at, in this, um, whole array um, iteration to do exactly the same thing. Now, in just a very similar way, I can come down here, and if I want to select based on a criteria, um, let's figure out which of these we want to do. We want to have the same for loop, and we want to dereference it in the same way. So I'm going to replace this line, so that I'm going through object list, and I'm getting wife, okay? And now, what I wanna do is instead of using um, a fate object out of my data two, I want to go if wife dot fate, and let's, let's go for the divorced ones this time. Not quite so gory, but you know, it just shows the difference, something's working. Um, Okay, so here we have the index, and I wanna pull, I think I'll just copy this down here. Okay, um, once again, I'm gonna apply formatting, because that's just the way I like things to be, and really it makes it much easier to work with. Okay, everything gets neat and tidy. And I change the label here into divorced wives. And if everything's working, 
we should now see um, Catherine of Aragon and Anne of Cleves. And I lost a line of output. Hang on a sec. So now we have index name and fate. Um, and again, I can pull this line out if I want to make a slightly shorter and neater list here. Run that. I get to see all of my wives up here. I get to see just the divorced ones down here. And that's the end of segment number three.